The United States is officially back to UNESCO, the United Nations Specialized Agency on Education, Scientific and Cultural Affairs. On July the 25th, a flag-raising ceremony was held to honor the re-entry of the U.S. after a five-year absence. The Biden administration proposed in June to rejoin the organization and committed to repaying 619 million U.S. dollars in arrears in, stall, in installments over the coming years. A vote was held later in June in the Paris headquarters of the agency on the matter, during which 132 countries voted in favor and 10 states, including China, Russia and Iran, voted against. This is the second time that the U.S has rejoined the organization against the backdrop of U.S. capris when it comes to international commitments, including agreements such as the Paris Climate Accord and the Iran nuclear deal. Is this going to be the last time? Why is the main architect of the multilateral international order apparently undermining it? Why did China vote no? I'm pleased to be joined from Beijing by Victor Gao, Chair Professor at Suzhou University, from Miami, the United States, by John Quelch, well, Quelch, Professor at the University of Miami Herbert Business School, and from Moscow, Russia, by Anton Fidashian, Associate Professor of History at the American University in Washington, D.C. Gentlemen, welcome to the point for this very important discussion. So, um, Mr. Gao, let me go to you first. Uh, as I mentioned uh, this March, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken told Congress that China is filling the vacuum left by the United States in UNESCO, he said that uh, they, meaning the Chinese, are working on rules, norms and standards for artificial intelligence. We want to be there. And China right now is the single largest contributor to UNESCO. That carries a lot of weight. He said we are not even at the table. Is that the main reason why the U.S. wanted to rejoin the UNESCO, to be at the table again? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, other things being equal, the United States of America should be a member of uh, UNESCO and uh, many other international organizations. So, for the United States to rejoin UNESCO is something that we need to ask. Why? Why is the United States rejoining? Then the other question we need to ask is why was it the fact that the United States decided to uh, withdraw from UNESCO? I think this whole farce is created by the United States itself. If there is a vacuum, as Tony Blinken was talking about, that vacuum was created by the United States. So the United States is at full fault for the fact that it withdrew and then it wanted to rejoin, etc. Another point, that let me emphasize, is that the international organizations, including UNESCO, is not a playground for kids spoil the kids in particular. Uh, therefore, I think this whole farce revealed the fact the United States is not a mature country, is not exercising leadership or statesmanship. It's really very capricious. That's the only word I can think of. And I think China's opposition is firmly based on the fact that if the United States wants to become a member, pay all the overdues, for example, all the arrears, and now the United States wants to pay all the overdues in arrears over many years, for example, at a time when the United States still runs a high uh, overdue in arrear for the membership fees for the United Nations. This is not acceptable and this does not bode well for the United States as a member of UNESCO because U.S. joining UNESCO is most likely turning UNESCO into a battleground not for science and technology and many other things that mankind are very much interested in, but into an ideological geopolitical battleground at the time when the United States is not a fully paid up member of UNESCO. This is turning the United States into a farce. Professor Quelch, what is your take? I mean, especially given what the Chinese Foreign Ministry's uh, reaction after the U.S. proposed to rejoin UNESCO that uh, international organizations are not parks. Countries 
can just come and go as they please. More importantly, the U.S. must not view international organizations in, as places for geopolitical wrestling and pursue global leadership in the name of interests of international community. Uh, well, first of all, I'd like to remind you that uh, the United States left uh, UNESCO because of the radical politicization of UNESCO uh, as a result of uh, Palestinian admission and uh, anti-Israeli activity within UNESCO targeting the United States. So politicization of an agency that should be uh, educational and cultural and in the interests of global cooperation and mutual respect, uh, that politicization led the United States to leave. Now, five years later, the Biden administration has, I think, quite sensibly rolled back the uh, decision of the Trump administration. And this has been greatly assisted by the current director general, who has a much more mature view of what UNESCO should be all about than her predecessor. Uh, who was responsible for, in large part, permitting the politicization to occur. So it's very welcome that the French Director General has facilitated and worked very hard to facilitate the re-entry of the United States and, in addition, has cleaned up some of the waste and corruption that characterized uh, UNESCO under uh, the previous regime. Uh, so we, we welcome, of course, uh, our readmission into the United in, into UNESCO and uh, hope to play uh, a prominent part as befits a country that is going to be contributing uh, around about 22 percent of the UNESCO annual budget and indeed as was pointed out uh, paying 619 million dollars in arrears uh, for the five years that the United States was not part of the uh, UNESCO organization uh, so I think we should look forward in a very positive uh, way to this development and uh, it's going to be good for the world, of course, that the United States is back in UNESCO. By the way, the ambassador of China to UNESCO when this uh, decision was first announced made a very warm welcome uh, to uh, the United States on its re-entry and accordingly I think uh, there must be some difference of opinion uh, within the Foreign Ministry of China. Professor Fidashian, what are your reactions to what Professor Quelch just said and of course to Mr. Gao's statements? Do you also think that the, it was the right decision for the U.S. to withdraw in the first place and also the right decision for the U.S. to rejoin at this particular moment? You know, I think uh, it's important for um, all of our viewers to remember that the United Nations and all of its institutions um, are not really sort of sovereign uh, actors on the world stage, although they certainly should be. They are a barometer of the geopolitical situation in the world at any one time. And countries have, you know, come in and gone out and had their problems with UNESCO um, for decades. It was created as a Western club. Um, right after the Second World War and dominated by Western uh, states. And it did very good work, by the way, uh, during that time. And then during the era of decolonization, when between 45 and 1960 alone, there were about three dozen new countries, um, UNESCO uh, became bigger, it became more complicated, uh, it became more difficult for Western states to get their uh, way um, all the time. In 1974, Gerald Ford, the U.S. president, suspended payments, and then uh, President Reagan actually took the U.S. out of UNESCO in 1983. The British, by the way, followed under Margaret Thatcher in 1985, then the U.S. came back under George W. Bush. Um, and then President Obama suspended uh, payments again in 2011, and then Trump took the U.S. out. So this is part of the geopolitical uh, game. Um, I think it's uh, great that the U.S. is uh, back in, um, but this is all uh, a manifestation um, of much deeper systemic um, standoffs and conflicts that we see in our world, including the most important systemic structural change, which is the gradual de-westernization of uh, geopolitics, uh, by which I do not mean 
the disappearance of uh, uh, the EU and European countries and the US from the world stage, but simply recalibration of the balance of power in Europe. And it manifests itself both economically and militarily and geopolitically and also culturally and in the realm of uh, science. So we'll see um, how the United States behaves as a member of the organization, but I can only welcome its return to the, to the ranks of the global community. Professor Quell, do you want to react to that? Because this is, as uh, Professor Fidashin rightly pointed out, this was not the first time that the United States withdrew from UNESCO and rejoined. Um, if there is a problem, for instance, that you just mentioned, wouldn't it be also appropriate to resolve the problem being part of the, uh, uh, being on the platform instead of withdrawing it? What kind of president does it set for other countries? I mean, if you don't like a certain organization, just retreat. Um, is that going to be the right way for problems to be solved? Uh, no, I don't think so. And I agree with uh, the professor uh, that uh, uh, the United States out of an international organization is not good uh, for the organization or for the world. In fact, uh, I think many in the United States would be critical of what we call empty seat diplomacy. In other words, the notion that you can conduct diplomacy uh, if you are not seated at the table. Um, the UNESCO performs very, very many uh, valuable functions uh, in terms of uh, uh, educational initiatives and uh, in the climate change arena. Uh, water is an area that UNESCO has been very, very much focused on, water conservation. Uh, and in addition to that, of course, uh, the World Heritage Site uh, program of UNESCO is very important to tourism and travel for many, many nations around the world. So th these are all very important activities and um, I would agree it is wrong for uh, the United States not to be a part of these organizations. But when an organization is hijacked uh, by a group uh, to promote activity and objectives that are not related to the mandate and mission of the organization, then I think uh, that's not a good thing either. All right. Uh, Professor Gao, your reactions before we wrap up. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, the uh, distinguished panelist uh, mentioned uh, the issues around uh, Palestine. Allow me to emphasize, Palestine is a very important country in the world of today. And Palestine is entitled to join all the international organizations. Any country try its best to exclude Palestine is not the right thing to do. It is against the megatrend of the world. Therefore, for the United States to withdraw from a very important organization like UNESCO, based on membership for Palestine, is, in my best judgment, the wrong thing to do. And the U.S. discrimination against the state of Palestine is one of the fundamental reasons why the United States is firing its relations with Arab countries and the Muslim countries. Therefore, on this very important occasion, allow me to emphasize the fact that the United States need to deal with Palestine in full respect rather than discriminate against the legitimate rights of the Palestinian people and to support UNESCO in dealing with the great nation of Palestine. That's number one. Number two is that, of course, the United States is still a leading country in science, technology, health, many things which are covered by UNESCO. Yeah. And this is the reason why United States being a member of UNESCO is a very important thing. And I hope, first of all, the United States will never withdraw from UNESCO. Secondly, the United States will be a responsible member of UNESCO rather than being a spoiled kid in the wrong sense of oh. the word and really shoulder the international responsibilities on its own shoulder. Okay, we have to leave it there for this topic. Many thanks to my guest, Victor Gao, Chair Professor at Suzhou University, John Quelch, Professor at the University of Miami, Herbert Business School, and Anton Fidashin, Associate Professor of uh, American School in Washington, D.C.